<laughs> and welcome, oh, oh. <laughs> hello and welcome to the 100% Real with Ruby podcast. Today we got a double dose of the most amazing people when it comes to putting the truth out there without sugarcoating it. And I think our industry needs a lot more of this because it is so easy, especially this time of year, to go scrolling through your social media feeds seeing 12-week transformations, six-week transformations, seeing people with before and afters. Like I just saw someone post up one of their boot camp sessions at the end of it. I'm like, the, the, what? like, yes, this is awesome to praise. Like this is all great shit. People are making amazing choices to change their lifestyle. But the thing is that a lot of people that aspire to that and they want to go and do the same thing but then they end up recycling the same story. They end up coming out the end of it worse or with this shitty relationship with food, with the same restriction mindset, not knowing what to do after and going back to the way they were before. And then you're literally just repeating history. And we already know from Harry Potter that history repeating itself does not end well. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. I don't <laughs> ever make, hardly ever make analogies to Harry Potter, but. I just heard Harry, I literally just heard Harry Potter in my head saying it's history repeating itself. But <laughs> I have I have Kenny and I have Sarah Lipton here, and I'm sure you both face the same like the same bottlenecks as me when it comes to teaching our clients that you can't rush the process, you can't force the process. So I'm gonna hand it over to you and let you guys kind of dive into the whole not rushing the process thing and why it is important to get yourself ready first because that is actually how you rush the process because otherwise you're just extending it in the long run yeah no absolutely and ruby thank you for having us on here by the way uh it's really cool to finally do this um i know we've been trying to plan this going back and forth so it's finally good to finally be you know on your podcast and just be able to talk to you face to face so it's really cool and yeah, but you know, you're right. You know, it's kind of a funny thing where there's a lot of boot camps, a lot of six week, you know, challenges, 12 week challenges, whatever it might be, right? Especially at this time of the year. And there's nothing wrong with um, those things necessarily because they do promote a healthier lifestyle, right? Where, for example, if you're brand new to fitness and you're, you just see that motivation come up where, hey, I want to make a change in my life. That's great. But the issue is that there tends to be this misunderstanding to how quickly your results can happen. And those transformations that you typically see within, you know, a very short period of time, um, they can result not for everyone, but there's, there, there comes this, there's pros and cons to it. So whenever you put your body through a massive, very quick change, you know, there, there's things in the background that are happening, uh, things that you don't probably recognize or even understand. And when we see this um, mainstream diet culture where there is this push to lose 40 pounds in 30 days or, you know, lose um, really these massive numbers within a really short period of time, that's a very high stressor on your body. And there's a reason there's a term called yo-yo dieting where people yo-yo between these challenges between these, you know, quick fixes, whatever it might be. And it can wreak havoc on your hormonal health, um, which is what leads you to having this unsustainable lifestyle. Um, even though your goals, your, your intentions are great, um, there needs to be, at least in my opinion, I'll let Sarah also dive in on this, um, a deep understanding as to why it is actually better to gradually take your time with transforming your overall health. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. I would say it's funny. A lot of times the reason why we get so caught up in wanting to get results so fast is because we're tied to an outcome. We're not tied to the process. Um, and as a society, we don't have a weight loss problem, right? Like losing the weight is easy. That part is easy. Everybody can do it. You can, you know, drop your calories too below and the weight will come off. But the problem is, is we have a maintenance of that weight loss. That is an issue um, because you cannot prolong it. Diets don't inherently fail. It's the dieter that fails because it's hard to sustain, um, you know, coming from a similar background in terms of 
you know, doing cardio all the time, eating super low calories, I would say for majority of my adult life, I don't think I even really started eating sufficient calories until I was gosh, like I want to say 26, to be honest. So for a majority of my adult life, I was in probably between 900 to 1200 calories. Um, and was wondering why on earth my body wouldn't respond to anything that I was doing in the gym. Um, because we, like Kenny was saying, we downregulate hormones. Um, we upregulate cortisol. Like it, it becomes a perfect storm for making it really, really hard to lose the body fat. And what ends up happening is you might notice, like if you have done, you know, numerous diets, like all the diets are essentially the same, they're restrictions, right? It's just a different label on that diet. Um, you might find that the rebound is a lot harder or that, um, you have a harder time losing the fat this time around. Um, one of the biggest things that we ask a lot of clients on, on consult calls is, you know, what have you tried? And oftentimes they list, well, man, I've, I've tried everything I've done it all. Right. Like I can't name on, on two hands, what I've done. Um, and it's the, the next question is, is, well, you know, how did that work for you? And oftentimes it's like, this is why, you know, people come to us, right. For help, because they found themselves in this sticky situation where their bodies are no longer responsive or they're eating less calories, but still gaining weight and gaining fat. Um, because we've spent so many years tied to an outcome and not tied to the process, which is so, so important. I can promise you that tying yourself to the process is what's going to make it much more enjoyable. I know that we all want results. We all do. I, I am in a similar boat just because I'm a coach doesn't mean that I am immune to having those feelings. Um, I've been working on hormonal healing for the last eight months and it's, it's extremely hard to tie yourself to a process that doesn't necessarily give you the immediate result that you're looking for. And it's that in instant gratification that social media shows us that, uh, often drives a wedge between what we actually should be doing versus what we are doing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah thank you for mentioning that process as well, because I mentioned a couple of times I went through this, like I'm at the end of it now, like I'm eating heaps and I'm staying lean and I'm getting the result. Like I'm actually, my body bounced back straight away after just one week in the gym after the lockdown. And if I was in this position two years ago, that would not have happened because I did the same thing, except it took me two proper years to get myself back because I did two plus proper years of eight to eight back-to-back -back shows of figure competing. And people don't realize that the harder and the longer that you diet, that same time frame needs to be on the other end of it to actually heal yourself and get yourself in a position. And because everyone's always spitting out, you're not sticking to the diet, you're not sticking to the plan. That's the only message that's getting out there. And then on the other side is these woo-woo people, people saying calories don't count. And it's not about calories, it's about hormones. But in the, in the messy middle is the place where, yeah, okay, you are probably not sticking to your diet. Exactly. That's hundred percent guaranteed because if you're trying to restrict, you're hundred percent not sticking to it. But then on the other end, actually, yeah, there are people that are in such a stressed out state. Their body is fat loss resistant, as we like to call it, which I love because you, you used the term that I always used to use too, but I stopped saying it because it, no one understood it. But you are fat loss resistant because when your body is stressed out, your cells start to shut down. So then you have like cells use energy to function. If some cells are shutting down, they don't need that energy you're eating. The others do. So whatever you're consuming, yes, it's a calorie deficit on paper, but your methods that were extreme has now led to these cells shutting down. So your body is inevitably using less energy. And Sarah put this post on her wall and I loved it. It was... If you find that you are constantly trying to diet harder, work out harder, hit the cardio machines harder in order to elicit change, and that doesn't seem to be working, maybe you need to listen to your body. And it's it's something that I'm going to actually get Kenny to dive really deep into is he mentioned hormonal, hormonal like hormonal downregulation. 
that also means that your digestion isn't going to be doing the same thing as well because your digestive enzymes now don't have the energy to do what they need to do. You don't need your digestion to survive, but you do need your brain, your heart, and all your other organs. So yeah. without that, without that gut doing what it needs to do, how are you actually meant to see results? And if you're telling yourself the same story of, as Sarah was saying, so Sarah can then dig into this after Kenny digs into that. As Sarah was saying, if you keep telling yourself, I've been doing this for years, I'm, I've always done this and I can't see results. Well, that's exactly what Sarah was touching on. You were too attached to the outcome to even let yourself start to see results. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. There's this, you know, dichotomy between aesthetics and health. And, you know, we all want aesthetics. I think aesthetics is very heavily pushed in today's society, right? From magazines to Instagram to Facebook. It's just a constant highlight reel. And, you know, to be, per to be fully transparent, uh, there was times where I actually had to step off social media because I thought, holy crap, like, why am I not looking like this guy? And what can I do to do this, right? Um, and it felt hopeless. And when you feel hopeless, um, there's this, I think, deeper drive to do things that are at least at service level that are going to offer you a solution, right? And so these quick fixes become very, very um, attractive. But with that said, you know, I do want to talk about this idea of aesthetics versus health because aesthetics and health, they're two different things. They are uh, correlated with each other, but only one of them leads to the other. And so what I mean by that is when there's this heavy push for aesthetics where we're trying to look a certain way, whether it's to get you know, very lean, um, to get a bigger booty, to get bigger legs, bigger chest, whatever it might be, um, and you don't consider your health, eventually, yes, you could definitely get the aesthetics that you're looking for, but at some, but at some point, your health is going to be the uh, costing factor. In other words, your health is going to start to go down. Uh, but if you begin to focus on your health, then aesthetics will come. A healthy body is a responsive body. This is what Ruby was talking about, right? Where your, your cells, your body as a whole, Will begin to respond if your health's in order and so like an analogy that Sarah and I like to use is a factory if you were to imagine a factory your body being this factory and the factory produces whatever material it's going to do right you're producing a product and let's just imagine you cut off the material that feeds into the factory to allow you to produce this product well your production rate's probably going to go down right because you don't have enough material going into your factory and similarly if you don't have enough food or energy right coming into your body, your factory is going to slow down because, well, you're going to run out of material. Why would you run the factory at full capacity when you don't have enough material coming in? You're going to waste money. You're going to waste time. You're probably going to send everyone home and you're going to be pissed. And it's like, who wants that, right? So what ends up happening there is that if you have a lack of energy, a lack of material coming into your factory, which is your body, then your body, in order not to waste time, in order not to waste energy, in order not to send everyone home, is going to literally slow things down and it's going to downregulate everything. And so your, your hormones, just to give you an idea as to what that is. So hormones, you know, thrown out, that word thrown out around a lot, right? Hormones are just messengers. They're, they're, they're messengers that deliver messages throughout your body. They're, they're literally there to deliver instructions to, okay, body do this, body do that, right? And there's different hormones in the body that serve different purposes. And so when you have a down regulation in energy, meaning that you're restricting your body of this material and your factory is, at, is running at full capacity, that doesn't make any sense. Your body is going to slow things down. And when you slow things down, everything slows down. Your metabolism slows down. Your ability to digest food slows down you're going to start feeling probably really crappy. You're going to probably feel like, oh, I'm, I need to fall asleep right now. You're going to have energy crashes. Your brain fog is going to skyrocket because everything is quite literally slowing down. And we don't want that. Instead, what we want, and I would imagine if you want to have a very high productive factory, you would want material coming in and even flow so that you can start to produce more product, right? Because what kind of factory owner would want to have a factory that's not producing product? Like you're, gonna, you're, you're wasting money or losing money, you're wasting your time, and your workers are going to be pissed. So with food, you do want to have an abundant amount of energy. Food, energy, amount of energy, 
that aligns with your lifestyle. So with that said, you know, obviously everyone has a different lifestyle. Everyone has different goals. And depending on what your lifestyle is and what your goals are, the amount of material going to your factories can be different. But understand that just like any business, like any other factory, the factory can expand, right? So in other words, if you add another material room to produce more product, well, guess what? You're going to need more material to come in because your factory is growing. And this is how your metabolism functions. If you bring more food in, your body is going to, as the factory is going to have to say, oh, wow, we can produce more product. So we're going to produce more product and it's going to begin to upregulate everything. And so when you have a lack of food, a lack of energy, your body needs energy to not only survive, but thrive. And so if you have a lack of it, then expect your health to begin to go down. Now, obviously, you know, there's ways to control an energy deficit, right? Like we can control this and have you gradually decrease your energy if we're trying to lose fat or whatever we're trying to do, right? But if like Ruby was alluding to, like what Sarah was alluding to, if you stay too low, too long, or you cut this really fast, then things are really going to start to become jacked up and we don't want that. And so um, like for me, for example, I, I've been dealing with a gut issue and I have, I, I've come to the end of it, I would say, but I've been dealing with it for God, I don't know, seven months now. And it's been terrible. And, you know, my issue was primarily because I was eating too much. So there's a possibility, there's also possibility to put too much material into your body, right? Such as binging or such as just overeating. And so these behaviors where you restrict your calories really, really high. And then there's this unsustainable lifestyle you're living and there that, that desire to want to eat is going to skyrocket and you binge over and over again, because that, that has happened to me in the past. It really messes things up. And so with the gut, you know, your gut is the second brain. Like it, it is quite literally every, the place where everything you consume is being broken down and is eventually going to be distributed throughout your body. Right. All the food you eat, whether it's proteins, whether it's carbs, whether it's fats, they all serve a purpose. And hopefully your gut health is okay. But if you're doing things like, for example, what I was doing, which was eating way too much food too quickly, or on the other side of the spectrum, just not eating enough and putting a lot of stress on your body, uh, stress being either mental or physical. So for example, if you are someone who is eating very little, but saying, well, shit, I got to go to the gym like seven days a week or six days a week and go pump some iron or whatever the hell you're doing. Um, that's a lot of stress in your body. So imagine this, your factory is at the highest production rate you could possibly imagine, but there's no material coming into the factory. Like you're going to probably burn out your machinery, right? You're going to probably shut the, that place down quicker than you can say hello. Right. And we don't want that. Um, so with that said, you know, gut health as a whole, it, 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 you want to make sure that you're healthy in general, but it, it requires, at least in my opinion, um, eating foods that not only do you enjoy, but digest well. And the way you can tell if you digest well is, do you feel brain fog? Do you feel leth lethargic afterward? Are you bloated afterward? Because there are certain food intolerances we may have, but also not stuff in your face, like just eating, it's, you know, I guess, yeah, this is different, purely subjective, right? Like, good amounts of food throughout the day and not just engorging food at one sitting, right? Um, and also making sure that you're eating in a stress-free environment or, a, or as stress-free as it could possibly be, right? So like for Sarah and I, uh, for example, um, we will advise clients to literally take deep breaths before they eat, um, to you know go to a place where, hey, there's no stress from your job, from your you know husband or wife or whatever the hell's going on, right? Um, you want to eat in a state where you are stress or as stress-free as possible, because that can also affect you, which I'll let Sarah uh, dive a little deeper into that, especially with Thanksgiving coming up and all the holidays, because people tend to stress about those things. So, yeah. I, w I just wanted to touch on something that you said, because not like he first alluded to the fact that you also need to fuel for your lifestyle. A lot of mothers out there are not office workers. They're running around, they're doing their duties, they're working on their feet. There's a lot of real tower workers that are on their feet all day. There's people that do cleaning jobs. There are people that are very active day to day. Now, on the other spectrum, there are, well, actually with that spectrum, like bring that into it. Now, oh, I need to make sure that I train five days, six days, 
seven days a week. I need to do this group class. I need to add on some hit because I didn't feel smashed out enough after my workout, which I see all the time. Like I'm not exhausted enough after this workout. That wasn't hard enough. I still have energy. Like one of the most, like a common thing that I see with people in this mindset still, which I really want you to go into the mindset side of that too, Sarah. But the mindset of that outcome still is, oh, well, I had more energy today. So I'm going to chuck on this hit session. Oh, I had more energy today. So I went to the gym anyway and did a hit session or I did a group class. It's like, you have these stresses coming in. You want to lose weight. You've already come in from this big stressed out environment, which we're there, like we're already diving into right now. When the body is stressed out, it is not going to be digesting food properly. It's not going to be assimilating as in breaking down and using the minerals, the vitamins needed to actually burn fats, burn carbs, build muscle, burn fat, burn carbs. And it just becomes this clusterfuck. So you're muted. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I can go on for days about that. So just a, a quick caveat to just with what Kenny said, I don't want this to go like miss. Uh, I don't want this to go I don't want this to be misconstrued. So when he said that he was eating too much, like, don't get this idea. Like, oh my God, if I eat too much, like I'm going to have a gut issue. Eventually understand that Kenny's intake was probably the amount of food that I eat in four days. And yeah. my intake was not low. So just understand like, oh, well, you're having me eat more. Like, I don't want it to become a gut issue. Don't misconstrue that. Like he was eating like a ridiculous amount, like ridiculous amount. So yeah. this is where the problem comes in. That, that, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. I was eating about, oh God. Um, and I'll never do this again. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think between 5,000 and 5,500 calories per day. And, uh, yeah, it was getting to the point where, you know, I thought, well, holy shit, I need to eat all this food and I don't, I don't seem to have enough time. So I guess we're just going to stuff the shit out of our faces and go for it. And yeah, it was, it was, he was, fun. he was yeah. eating like things that were to get the calories in like super calorically dense versus things that are nutrient dense. So the food quality, like while we do, like while we practice like flexible dieting with our clients, like food quality does matter. Like the 80, 20 rule, like should be, you know, followed because you want sustainability, but just understand like food quality does matter when it comes to overall gut health and, and just overall health in general, uh, hormones, everything. Um, also generally why I try to say, try to keep it 90, 10, most of the time and 80, 20, some of the time. And I just realized we're going to have to do a part two because there's three of us and I have a 40 minute time limit. So, um, oh. so as soon as this ends, jump on again and we'll do the same link and we'll do it. Okay. Again. But, okay. That's good. but it's so good having all three of us there. I'm loving this so much. I'm like, this is going to go on for ages and I don't even mind because this shit is so important. Like you need to realize that if you're going to just take it in context of, oh, I can eat shit the weekend because that's 20%. It's like, yeah, but if you're eating a whole heap of processed food in a constrained period of time, that also impacts your gut lining. That also impacts your mood. That also impacts your satiety signals, your cravings. Like I actually told myself that I don't like these foods, even if I did, just so I don't eat them. And in doing that for such a long period of time, I don't even crave them anymore. I don't even want them. Like my craving is a freaking tuna bake now. Like I crave tuna bake if I crave anything. Like that shit comes with time. And the more that you give into these hedonic foods, as in foods that taste really freaking good, and especially going into Thanksgiving, I want you to touch, touch on this too. Thank, well, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but going into like Sunday, not Sunday, December, it's the last day of the week. It's the last month of the year. Going into December, if you're going to take bits and pieces from every single dish, that is going to create a taste bud gasm, a taste bud gasm. And you're just going to eat probably three times what you can actually allow into your body because that shuts off your satiety signals because mm. dopamine. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to, to go back to what you were saying in terms of like people going into workouts and then we'll get into like the, the Thanksgiving and the holidays thing, because 
that one, that one hits home for me super, super hard. Um, and it's why I am where I am right now. Um, the idea that you need to go into your workouts and feel completely depleted is completely false. In fact, the workouts are there. You should be getting energy from your workouts, not feeling completely depleted. Like that should not be the goal. And I understand like we have this mentality of like, I need to push harder. I need to work harder. I need to sweat more. I need to be sore. Like none of those things are factual. Um, I spent probably the past two years training the same exact way and pushing myself to the brink of just complete exhaustion, every workout, which is why I am struggling so hard hormonally right now. So eventually those things do catch up with you. Like if you're not there yet, you continue down the path that you're going down, it will catch up with you and you will struggle really, really hard. And you will have to do things to correct it. Um, the hormones, unfortunately, aren't going to just correct themselves uh, once you get to that point. Um, so understand that like from an, an exercise perspective, your, your workouts should make you feel more energetic, especially, especially as a woman, like that is so vitally important. So don't go into these workouts thinking I need to completely demolish myself in order to make any sort of progress or feel like I have succeeded at any point. Um, that's not the case at all. And that mindset definitely needs to change. And it's something that has taken me a long time to get to, um, ultimately me just like completely shutting down from a hormonal perspective. And I would not wish that on my worst enemy to be completely honest. Um, as a woman, that is something that is extremely difficult to deal with. Um, and not anything that I want anybody or any of my clients to, to face. So, um, lose the mentality that you need to completely demolish yourself in the gym. It's fine to like push hard. Uh, don't, don't take that the wrong way. Like put the effort in push hard. Um, but don't leave the gym feeling like you can't function the rest of the day. It, I actually do want you to dig into why it is so important for us as women to actually realize we are not small men. We, we are not small men. Like we can, we can train like beasts. We can train like men. Like I have a male mentality when I train. I mm -hmm. post my workouts in my stories to show I, I train male-like and I don't look like a man because I'm not a small man. We have different hormonal systems. And I actually show the fact that I lift heavy ass weight and I'm not looking anywhere near bulky like a man. I'm not... I'm not this fat person that thinks that like powerlifting or bulk, like lifting heavy makes you fat or bulky. Like I'm trying to cut that myth. That is what I do. But it does not mean that the rest of what I do or the rest of the way my body functions is like a man. Like, yeah, I want you to dig into that. I'll let you do that. Yeah. Um, so I love that saying. It's, my coach says that all the time. Um, so I, I love that saying. Um, as a woman, we are so much more complex from a hormonal standpoint. Let's put it this way. Like a lot of women out there, like you're married, let's just say you're married or you have a boyfriend, right? Like when you guys go to the gym, like how often do you see, or how often do you hear your friends say, oh my gosh, my husband, like just started working out and dropped 20 pounds and I am not doing nothing's happening here. We are so much more complex, which is why we have to be so much more careful when it comes to our hormone function um, and working out, like just kind of like there's like there's two ends of the spectrum, right? There's like there's not working out at all, and then there's going max effort 100% of the time, no breaks, no no rest days, uh, eating super low calories, and and trying to keep up with uh, you know powerlifters. 365 days of the year. Let's just say that for example. And then there's this place in the middle, like a lot of people, most people, I would say, don't push themselves hard enough. Um, I was one of those people. It took me a really long time to learn how to really push myself in the gym to, um, make results happen. But there's also this spectrum of making sure that your recovery threshold does not, um, does not, uh, fall behind, uh, the thresh, the stress threshold that you put on your body in the gym. Um, so as a woman, your recovery is so vitally important. Um, getting stress low is vitally important doing things like yoga and deep breathing or getting yourself into a parasympathetic state, meaning that you aren't doing anything, um, that is of 
that is going to place any stress on your body, like no cardio, like just like really taking time to be present in your, in the moment, um, is something that is, is super important, especially as a woman. Um, if you are going to be training hard is making sure that you have that re recovery threshold taken care of, um, just because we are so complex. And as women, um, you know, our society is plagued with most women doing really high intensity hit training, uh, cardio, like plyometric style training versus lifting weight, um, and lifting weight itself, like can really help with hormone function. But at the same time, you have to be very careful again, to make sure that that recovery threshold stays like with your stress threshold, you want it actually above, right. You want to be recovering, uh, more optimally than you are stressing out your body. Um, which is why so many women find that problem where, Oh, Kenny goes in the gym and loses fat right away. And here I am eight months in and my body's not doing anything because hormonally I'm not functioning from an optimal place because of how much I put stress on my body versus paying attention to my recovery. Um, so men, you know, they have all the, the female hormones, but they just they're at different levels, obviously. Right. Which is what makes them men versus women. We all have, you know, sex hormones, but, um, from a, a female standpoint, like biggest thing that I want anybody to take away here is that recovery significantly matters as a woman. Um, you know, it, it's going to make a world of a difference, uh, especially when it comes to overall fat loss and muscle gain. I think that's a perfect place to leave part one of this segment and we will join you for part two, which is going to come out literally in a couple of days. So I will see you in the next little bit. All right, Ruby. We'll see you soon, dude. Thanks guys.